And so we believe that over time, more and more Bitcoin mining will be done from a perspective of free energy, as we call it. Mm -hmm. And so we started a business unit within our company that does energy harvesting. So energy harvesting takes wasted energy, underutilized energy, mm. um, converts it into Bitcoin, and then takes the heat from that conversion process and feeds it back into an industrial process. So mm. you may have seen recently we announced we're heating 11,000 homes in Finland mm -hmm. using Bitcoin. And it takes two megawatts of power and we can heat 11,000 homes. So we get paid for heat yeah. that offsets our cost of electricity. Right, and that is waste heat from the process. It's nothing exactly. additional you're creating. So uh, think of it this way. A company or a building pays money for electricity to generate heat to heat the, the building. Mm -hmm. Or they can pay us to generate heat to heat the building. And we generate heat by mining Bitcoin. Right. Right. A community can deploy solar panels and battery systems in excess of their energy need. And instead of selling the excess energy to the grid at some low price, they can mine Bitcoin with the excess energy because there's zero marginal cost to that energy. It's coming from the sun. Mm -hmm. right? And so we're working now with companies who are taking Bitcoin mining systems and converting them so that they can be used to take that solar energy, mine Bitcoin, and then generate hot water for the homes wow. that way. And all the while, those companies are allowing consumers to pay 25% less for their electricity. So here you're starting to see Bitcoin mining move from this big industrial kind of thing mm -hmm. that has been our traditional business, moving to a highly decentralized, highly distributed form of mining where the cost of electricity and havings don't really have an impact because Bitcoin mining is just a tool to get hot water, mm -hmm. right? And in the industrial complex, uh, look at beer brewing, look at methanol, ethanol production, look at paper mills. They all need hot water. They all need heat. And companies pay roughly, if you think about their energy costs, their energy budgets, about 14 to 15% of their energy budgets are for heating things. Hmm. Right? So if you can take the cost that you would invest in generating heat through heaters, which think it's, it's a waste, right? Mm -hmm. And instead mine Bitcoin and generate the heat. Right. Then now you're doing two things. One is you're lowering the cost to mine Bitcoin, making it hugely energy efficient because it's a, you're taking energy that otherwise was going to be used anyway, right? So you're not parasitic now. You're not an augmented load on the mm -hmm. grid. You're just part of an existing load that was doing something else before. Hmm. But if you can also generate your own energy by taking the waste product from beer brewing, taking the waste product from paper mills, waste heat, waste electricity, uh, flare gas from oil fields, methane from landfills, agricultural methane from large dairies and farms. And you can build systems that can be deployed next to these factories on the farms and the homes, et cetera. You're mining Bitcoin at zero cost. Wow. And I think that's the future. And, you know, we're super excited about, uh, you know, Jack Dorsey's team at Block talks about, you know, putting Bitcoin chips into everything. And I totally mm -hmm. agree with that concept. Mm -hmm. I think that's the future. We look at it as more of a, there's this commercial interim step, mm -hmm. which is think of any process that has a battery, some form of energy consumption to it. Which is every scale, process. <laughs> right? And mine Bitcoin. Yeah. With the excess energy. Right. You don't need to be mining Bitcoin 24-7. Because as large miners, with subsequent halvings, you know, the cost of electricity on the grid is not going to go down. And so eventually it will not be, viable to mine Bitcoin just because you want to mine Bitcoin. Right. Right. Unless you're getting paid for something where Bitcoin is the tool for what you're doing. Right. And in the AI business now, there, there's some really interesting things for Bitcoin miners where um, you have two types of kind of power load in the AI world. You have um, LLMs, <clears throat> the learning system. Mm -hmm. That's a constant power draw. And power utilities like constant power draws. Mm -hmm. But inference is like search queries, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so 
you all of a sudden have peaks and you have valleys. Well, that means your power draw is going to do that. And so you need to have a complementary power draw mm. that can perfectly balance your load so that you're flat. Bitcoin mining is perfect because it's like a battery or a capacitor. It sheds load or adds load whenever right. you need it. Right, right, right. So there's this really good model where you can marry Bitcoin mining and AI. That doesn't mean Bitcoin miners have to go into the AI business. Sure. Simply means you co-locate at the same data center. Yeah. The other thing is Bitcoin miners can um, set up and start running in very short periods of time. So when AI and hyperscalers want to build sites which take years to build, they can partner with a Bitcoin miner, tie up the power agreement, the Bitcoin miner can consume the power, and then as the AI center comes online, the um, Bitcoin mining load can decrease and then act as a load balancer. Oh, like bootstrapping it, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And so we're investing a lot of effort in our technology business around building the technologies that allow all of that to happen. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, click here to find more just like it and here to find our most recent episode. Also, make sure to like this video to help shine light on the corruption of money. And be sure to subscribe to this channel to stay connected.